Today is Wednesday, August 31st. We'll tell you about the latest development in the legal battle over classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. Also, an urgent and risky mission for inspectors in Ukraine trying to protect a nuclear power plant. Plus, a potentially record-breaking heat wave building across the American West. How brain surgery could help prevent serious binge eating. And the film festival jam-packed with Oscar hopefuls that kicks off today. Those stories and much more news to know next. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. The federal government is revealing new information about why officials felt it was necessary to raid former President Trump's home. The Justice Department now says its investigation into classified records at Mar-a-Lago is not just about the documents being there, but it's also about whether former President Trump or anyone else purposely tried to hide them from the feds. In a new court filing, the Justice Department says government records were, quote, likely concealed and removed from a storage room on the property, while the DOJ was trying to negotiate with Trump's team to get them back. This latest filing includes a picture of the secret and top secret documents found. In the past, Trump's lawyers have said he wanted to protect certain documents that were covered by executive privilege, which gives the president the right to keep information private for the good of the public. So far, Trump and his team have not commented on this most recent filing from last night, but we do expect to hear from them later this week when a judge considers whether to appoint a special master to go through all the documents and identify anything the FBI should not have looked at. To be continued. Some of the world's top nuclear inspectors are on a high-stakes trip to Ukraine this week. They're checking out Europe's largest nuclear power plant. That's been the site of intense fighting between the Russians and Ukrainians. This is actually the first time a team from the International Atomic Energy Agency has gone in to investigate a nuclear plant occupied by military forces during an ongoing war. Ukrainian officials say Russian troops are holed up inside the plant and using it to stage attacks, knowing that Ukraine can't fire back without risking a radiation crisis. But Russia says Ukraine has been firing on the plant anyway. Either way, it's now been hit many times and damaged. So there are fears of a potential nuclear disaster. So the IAEA team will look at the damage, assess security concerns, and the conditions under which Ukrainian technicians are working. Just to get to the plant, though, inspectors will have to cross a front line in the active war, since neither side has announced a ceasefire for this visit. So it's considered an especially risky trip. Stay tuned. The man often credited with ending the Cold War has died. We're talking about Mikhail Gorbachev, who was the last president of the Soviet Union. He passed away yesterday at the age of 91 at a hospital in Moscow, where he had been dealing with a severe long-term illness. Over the years, many have hailed Gorbachev as one of the most important world leaders of the late 20th century. With the risk of nuclear war at an all-time high between the Soviet Union and the United States, Gorbachev did what many before him couldn't. He eased tensions and helped negotiate a lasting peace, all without firing a shot. Gorbachev negotiated arms reductions agreements with the U.S., and he formed partnerships with other Western powers that eventually led to the collapse of the Berlin Wall. His hard work won him the Nobel Peace Prize in 1990. A year later, the Soviet Union fell apart and Gorbachev's reign ended. The collapse split the USSR into 15 separate countries. It's a moment many call a catastrophe for communism and a moment Russian President Vladimir Putin said he would undo if he could. In fact, a number of foreign policy experts say Putin's invasion of Ukraine is his attempt at reforming the shattered Soviet Union. Still, Putin offered condolences to Gorbachev's family, friends, and supporters. And a number of other world leaders have paid tribute, like President Biden, who said people everywhere benefited from his belief in a better world. Pakistan is dealing with unprecedented record-breaking floods. And now the United Nations says the country needs at least $160 million in emergency funding to deal with the aftermath. That money would go to food, water, health care, and other kinds of aid. And this week, the U.S. government said it would cover $30 million of it. Other countries like Turkey, China, and Qatar have also offered relief supplies. Pakistan has been getting rain for weeks now and what the U.N. chief has called a, quote, monsoon on steroids. More than a million homes have been damaged or destroyed. Nearly 1,200 people have been killed. And overall, initial government estimates say the flooding has caused $10 billion worth of damage to Pakistan's economy so far. Meteorologists say even more rain is likely over the coming weeks. Many experts blame climate change, 
Pakistan produces less than 1% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but it consistently ranks in the top 10 countries most vulnerable to the impacts of global warming. Back in the U.S., summer might be coming to an end, but the heat is definitely not. The National Weather Service says more than 55 million people across several West Coast states are about to be under a heat advisory watch or warning. People in San Diego will likely get the worst of it. They're bracing for a high of 115 degrees. In parts of Arizona and Nevada, temperatures could be as much as 12 degrees hotter than normal for this time of year. If things get as bad as meteorologists think they might, dozens of heat records could be shattered. This heat wave is expected to stretch all the way into next week in what could be the longest heat wave of the year for California. Overall, it's going to make for one hot Labor Day weekend and beyond. All right, we have much more news for you still ahead. But first, a quick break for our sponsor. Business success stories often start with someone who had a great idea and then found great people to help them. If you're hoping to make headlines, you need to build a great team. You need Indeed. Well, Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. I appreciate that there are tools and a proven system right there at your fingertips. For example, Indeed assessments can give you a window into how candidates will be on the job. U.S. Indeed data found that on average, applicants who scored highly proficient or higher on the reliability assessment were nearly eight times more likely to consistently attend work. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com newsworthy. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com newsworthy. Indeed.com slash newsworthy. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. For people who binge eat where cravings lead to a loss of control, there's a possible new option in the works, and it involves brain surgery. Yes, really. The first two patients to ever undergo this experimental treatment for their binge eating disorders say they now have fewer cravings and more control over their eating habits. Surgeons implanted an electronic device into their brains, That device then learned exactly when the patients were feeling a desire to binge eat. From then on, whenever a patient would have a craving, the implanted device would know to give their brain a small shock. Doctors say that made the cravings more manageable. It's a process called deep brain stimulation, and it targets a section of the brain that processes our feelings of satisfaction. One woman who underwent the procedure says she felt results immediately. A second woman said it took her a few months to adjust, but she now has more control over her eating. After testing it for the last year on these two patients, doctors plan to surgically install the implants on four more people over the coming months as part of this pilot study. Of course, it still comes with the risks of brain surgery, so it's not going to be right for everyone. And much more research is needed before this would be more widely available. By now, you've probably heard of the social media app created by former President Trump. It's called Truth Social, but you still won't find it in the Google Play App Store. And keep in mind, that means most users with Android phones won't be able to download it. So we're talking about 44% of U.S. smartphones cannot have this app. Now there's more information about why. A Google spokesperson told Axios, Truth Social doesn't moderate its content enough, reportedly referring to things like threats of violence. Still, Google says it notified the app's team that it violates its policies from the app store and was told that Truth Social is working on addressing these issues. But Truth Social CEO told Real America's Voice that it's in Google's hands, and he doesn't know what's taking so long. That said, Android users can still access Truth Social on the website, and it is also available on the Apple App Store. So think about the group of friends and classmates you hung around with back in school because you all had some common interest or connection. Well, the idea behind that now has come to Twitter. The social media platform just started rolling out a new feature to everyone called Twitter Circle. Here's how it works. Your regular tweets get sent to everyone who follows you and can be seen by anyone who searches for you. On the other hand, tweets to your Twitter circle just are available to a smaller group of people that you personally select whether they follow you or not. The goal of circle is to make tweeting less intimidating by letting you use it like a group text chat. There's more privacy and it's more personal, though keep in mind people could still screenshot your tweets. Users can add up to 150 people to their circle and can change who's in and who's out. And Twitter isn't the only social media platform adding new features. Instagram is now testing two new tools. One lets you flag multiple things you're not interested in seeing all at once instead of having to do it post by post. 
The platform also says it's testing a way for users to list all the words, phrases, and emoji that they want to block from their feeds. The Venice Film Festival kicks off today, marking the start of the fall film season. And it's especially exciting since it's known as the place where many potential Oscar-winning films debut. This year, opening night film is a dark comedy called White Noise, starring Adam Driver. There's also The Whale, that's said to be a comeback for actor Brendan Fraser, and director Darren Aronofsky, who's known for The Wrestler, Black Swan, and Requiem for a Dream. Another highly anticipated movie on the lineup is Blonde, which features Ana de Armas as Marilyn Monroe. Oh, and remember The Father, the movie Anthony Hopkins won Best Actor for? Well, the follow-up to that movie, called The Sun, will be featured, starring Hugh Jackman. Some Oscar-winning films that have debuted at the Venice Film Festival in the past include Birdman, Spotlight, The Shape of Water, and Nomadland. Well, that's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story every Wednesday. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. If you're like my family, you like to pour over lists of reviews before deciding on where to book a reservation for brunch or dinner. So why not do the same when you're booking a doctor's appointment? With ZocDoc, you can see real, verified patient reviews to help find the right doctor in your network and in your neighborhood. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Yep, that's the other key here. You filter your search to only show doctors that take your insurance, which is such a time saver. And on ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten those teeth, fix an achy back, get a mold checked out, or anything else, ZocDoc has you covered. Plus, ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as reserving that brunch spot online or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. Go to ZocDoc.com newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash newsworthy. ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to Work Wednesday. Job openings in the U.S. jumped to another near-record high, meaning there are still way more jobs than there are people to fill them. The federal government just put out its July report that said there were more than 11.2 million job openings for the month. That's a big jump from June. Even economists did not expect July's numbers to be so high. They translate to nearly two jobs for every unemployed person. But all the while, hiring declined last month. As CNBC reports, all this information helps the Federal Reserve gauge inflation a bit. The thought is, since employers seem to be having a tough time hiring, they're forced to offer more money to attract workers. And those costs often get passed on to the rest of us with higher prices. The Fed has been hoping by raising interest rates, they'd slow down the job market a bit, along with borrowing and spending. Still, the hope is the number of open jobs will eventually go down without unemployment going up. To be continued. Well, thank you so much for trusting us to get your news and making us part of your day. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 